Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Matt Garvey and we are here to talk about making comics today. And in today's video, we are talking about catching those pesky, niggly, new letterist mistakes that we all make when we're first starting on our comic making journey. And just like the video I did a few weeks ago where I was pointing at colorist mistakes when they first start out, I am not poo-pooing on letterists either because as many of you know, I letter my own comics. And each and every one of these mistakes I'm going to point out to you today are mistakes that I have made in the past. So if I can show you these mistakes now... Hopefully, you know, if you're a project manager in your comic, you can pick those up if you see them happening to your books. Or if you are a new letterist and I can show you these mistakes, hopefully you can avoid making them in the future as well. So let's crack on. And just like working with any collaborator in comics, letterers are no different. Regardless if you're dealing with an absolute beginner or a top class professional, there are some ground rules when working with letterers. And they are letterers are not, I repeat, not your proofreader okay so do not treat them like proofreaders all their job is is to letter your comic so you need to make sure that your spelling and your grammar is correct before you send it over them to letter your comic yes there is going to be the odd occasion you know where they might catch you know a full stop missing here or an apostrophe missing there or a word spelled incorrectly yeah and it is very cool if they can pick that up and let you know about it but it is not their job to do so their job is to purely letter your book okay so before you send your script to over to your letterer you know send it to some buddies you know some trusted people you know a, a or even a professional proofreader and make sure that script is absolutely perfect before you send it over to them also never send your script over to a letterer in a pdf format this is a pain in the bum because have you ever tried to you know copy and paste text from a you know from a pdf document it never goes well okay and a letterist does not not type out all your sentences in your from your dialogue onto your comic pages all they do is they will you know copy and paste from say word into into illustrator or to photoshop or whatever software they are using to letter their your comics so you know don't do it in a pdf format do it in a, a word or an equivalent okay and lastly make sure your comic pages are formatted properly for print this has happened to me on a couple of occasions where you know an artist has sent me a comic over and said you know matt would you mind lettering a couple of pages for me and you know as, as a thank you i'll do you know i'll do you a cover or I'll do you a pin up that kind of thing and you know when i get the pages they're not formatted correctly so i need to change all the you know the point size of my fonts that kind of thing to try and you know accommodate that it's not right okay so don't treat letterers as your formatters either so make sure the script's correct make sure it's in the right format and make sure it's not a pdf okay guys so let's find some mistakes okay so one of the biggest mistakes i tend to see from new letterers is what i like to call sausage bubble syndrome and what i mean by this is a new letterer will uh, you know post their text you know from their word document onto the page like so i'm using red just so it shows up for this example and then what they will do is they'll grab their ellipses tool which is over here on the right and then they will draw a balloon around the text just put it underneath it just move it so it's inside the bubble and then what they'll do is they will get the pen tool and then draw a towel for the balloon going back into the balloon and then they will connect those two together Together. and yes that is a balloon but it looks like an ugly sausage let's be honest now i'm not a professional letterer as you'll know but i do letter my own comics this is how i would do it okay so i'm just going to show you this on a white background just so it's easier to see what i do when i'm lettering is i will copy and paste the text into the comic page and then what i'll do is i will try and arrange the words making sure there's you know two three maybe four words per line and instead of trying to think of it as a bubble, the easiest way to think about it is to think about it as a diamond shape. So if your text can fit in that diamond, you know, it's narrow at the top and narrow at the bottom and it goes wider at the sides. When you draw a bubble, the text is going to fit a lot better in that. And then what I do is I grab my ellipsis tool. Draw a more circular bubble around the text. Put it into place. Give it a little nudge with the, with the arrow keys. And then what I do is I grab, I come over here and I grab the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow. And then I will double tap on each corner of the bubble, left, right, top and bottom. And using the arrow keys, I'll just nudge it in a couple of points from each end. Then using the move tool, I'll just make sure, you know, everything's lined up how I want it. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to the page just so I can show you actually on the comic page. 
I'll select both those two layers, that's the bubble and the text. Here I'm just clicking the little eyes on the panels, on, on the layers together, and I will move them into the position that I want. And I'm gonna put this balloon over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the bubble layer, which is ellipse free in this, for example. Then I'm gonna grab my pen tool, and it's just, you know, the regular pen tool. I will do a click inside the bubble around the center, and I will click towards the character's head and I will hold and then I will just drag it slowly to the right, there you go. Then I'll press the Alt button, click this little box here and then I will click again in the center of the balloon and then I'll just pull that towel up. So it's a nice rounded towel and then I'll grab my selection tool again. I will click and hold outside of the balloon and drag over the balloon. And then I'll come up here to the top bar where you can see these two little squares interlocking. I'll click that and I'll click combine shapes. And then if I need to do a little bit of rejigging, I'll press the control button and click the, te click the text and the balloon together and get my move tool. And I will just move that balloon where I need it to go. So hopefully you can see that looks a lot nicer than that. Again, not a professional letterer, but if you can master this rather than the sausage balloon, it's gonna make your pages look a lot neater, a lot more professional. Okay, so the next big mistake I see from new letterers, and again, I'm guilty of this myself, is not having enough air in the balloons. And what I mean by this is, if we look at this balloon right here, we can see, you know, it is full of this white area, which is the, you know, in quotes, air. And at the moment, it looks absolutely fine. But if we put the text in that we put in from earlier, we can see actually that text is really up close to the border of the balloon. This isn't right. You need to let the text breathe. And what you need to do is just give it a little bit more space and just make the balloons a little bit bigger if you can, you know, and make sure that those letters are nowhere near the borders of that balloon. Okay, so the next mistake I tend to see is from letters putting balloons where they are not meant to go. I know sometimes panels can be tight and you are limited for areas where you can put them. But one of the things you mustn't do is put balloons in between two people that are speaking. So what do I mean by this? On the screen at the moment, you can see two people having a chat and where new letters tend to put the balloons is right in between where the guys are speaking. And this is incorrect. What you need to do is you need to try and keep this area in between the characters clear. Instead, what a new letterist should do is, you know, look at the placement of the balloons, you know, ultimately, you know, keeping the area between the two characters speaking absolutely clear and use the dead space around those characters to place those balloons. So in this instance, you know, you place the balloons here this way, you know, both characters are still speaking and you are not getting in the way of the art because the way I see lettering is, and you know, unless it's done for a specific stylized reason, you shouldn't really notice the lettering on the page because if it distracts you from the story, it's hurting the story. It should help push the story, not get in the way of the story, okay? And that's why lettering is such a great art form and they don't get enough credit for what they do, okay? So, you know, try and think about the placement of the balloons and not putting those balloons in between two people speaking. And another mistake I tend to see from new letters is crossing of the towels of the balloon. Again, a no-no, guys. You know, the person on the left of the panel tends to talk first, and if that's not the case, you need to find a way around, you know, doing the towels over another balloon, perhaps. But, you know, never have, you know, characters, you know, cross-talking through balloons like this. It doesn't look good. It looks very unprofessional. And the cardinal sin of lettering is never cover up anything important with regards to the art. You know, you're meant to use all this dead area around the characters to put the word balloons. So don't ever put balloons over people's heads if they don't need to, or, you know, over other stuff that's integral to the story. You know, if you are crammed for space and you need to kind of, you know, you've got to cover a little bit up here, a little bit up there, that kind of thing. You know, you can get a little bit fancy with your lettering and do stuff with masks, you know, and put those balloons, you know, behind people's heads, you know, like this. You know, and that's something that I can show you in another video. But, you know, as a, as a rule, you know, try not to cover up any art if possible. Now, this next one is more of a pet peeve rather than an actual mistake. But I think if you can master this, I think it's going to make your pages look a lot more professional. And what I tend to see from a lot of new letters is uh, they are constantly breaking the panel borders with their balloons, which 
on the rare occasion is absolutely fine, especially if you've got, you know, a page where, you know, for, you know, for stylistic reasons, you know, you've got bubbles floating around and you're following, you know, a speech pattern going across the page and down. But what I tend to see is because letters can't, you know, fit their bubbles and letters inside the panel, the bubbles and the letters are, you know, just in other panels where they shouldn't be. So what I mean by this, if you don't know what breaking the panel border is, as you see, this is a panel with one of my characters, Bobby, from uh, my new comic called The Cage. And you know, he's, this image is actually set inside a panel and this is the border of the panel, as you can see that I've just marked up with a red line. So what I will tend to see from new letters is, imagine there's a lot of text here and it can't actually fit in this physical panel or between, you know, Bobby's head and the panel. And what they'll do is they'll draw that bubble around the text and then draw the towel, go into his mouth. There we go, this is rather crude, but obviously I'm just doing it for this example. So as you can see, that bubble and the text has broken outside of that panel, which again, it's not a huge problem, but imagine if you did that on every single panel you got there, because some of these panels, you know, are close up, so it's a bit hard to put the text. So what I tend to do is I crop the bubbles into the panels. And again, not a professional letterer, I'm gonna show you the way that I do this. Move the text down slightly so it's actually in the panel. And then what I do is I'm gonna grab my ellipsis tool again, draw a rough ellipsis round the bubble, move it um, around the text even, put it under text on the layer. And then for example, let's say this is obviously not enough room. So the bubble would be outside, outside of that panel. Then what I would do is I would do how I normally do a balloon, you know, and I touch up the side, Make it a bit more rounded, a little less sausage-like. Again, this is done very crude just for, for this example. Uh, then I'll take my pen tool, draw my towel, going towards Bobby's mouth, because remember towels need to be pointed towards people's mouths and not their foreheads or arms or legs, always to their mouth. And then I'll quickly just join that bubble up, again using the Combine shapes here. Okay, so I've drawn my balloon, put my text in, done my towel, but you know, for the sake of this example, say, you know, this panel is too cramped, and if I don't change something, you know, this balloon is gonna burst that panel border. Okay, so how I like to approach this, and again, this is just my way of doing it, you know, other letterers will do it their own way. Um, I use a non-destructive way of capping the balloon at the, at the border, so it doesn't impact on the other panels that are on the comic page. And how I do this is with a technique that I learned from when I started to learn how to comic color. And it's using something called masks. And if you don't know about masks, there is no shame in it. I'll quickly go for it. So I've selected the balloon, which is here, ellipsis five. Then if I go down to the bottom right hand corner here of Photoshop, there is a little square with a gray circle in it. And as I hover over that, it says add layer mask. So if I click that, now you'll see next to that bubble, now a little white box has appeared. Now how masks work is it's a mask. So it works if you can think of, you know, just black and white. So at the moment, the mask is white, but anything I do in black takes away from the mask. So it's still there, it's just hidden by the mask. So if you can see, I'll try and zoom in so you can see it better. On that little white block there, next to the bubble, you can see there's a little black line that's just appeared. And that's because I've removed the bubble by painting over it with black. So if I select white again, I can bring that back just by painting it back in. Okay, so that, that that's what masks do. So in this case, you know, white will make something appear, but then if you paint something in black, it makes it disappear. And again, this is a technique that I learned when I started uh, coloring comics, but I found it very useful when I'm lettering as well. So that's why I've brought it over to this. So in the case of this balloon and text, what I would do is I, I would make sure that the mask is selected, not the bubble, the mask. So as you can see, there is you know, a little white bracket that goes around what you've selected. So that now it's on the bubble and now it's on the mask. And then what I do is I zoom in and then I just take my lasso tool and I click the, where the border is and I hold down the alt button so it makes a nice straight line. And then I drag that line over to, you know, past the bubble where it's gonna go into the, into the panel, let that go. And then all I do is I fill that with black. 
So as you can see, the balloon is now masked out where the border is. I've missed some bits here, there we go. But the text doesn't look quite right, so what I need to do now is just select the text again, grab the move tool, and just nudge the text down a little bit, and there we have it. And that's how I deal with not going outside of the panel borders. And me personally, I think that looks a lot neater than breaking the border. Again, pet peeve, it's not a major mistake, but I think that looks a lot neater on the page, so. And last but certainly not least, we need to discuss when to use crossbars on the letter I. And this example on the screen, I have borrowed from Nate over at Blambot. Uh, the reason I'm borrowing this is because it is the best example I have ever seen. And every time Nate posts this on Twitter, it fries everyone's little minds because a lot of people can't see the difference between these two speech bubbles. This video isn't sponsored by Blambot in any way, but because I'm borrowing this example, I thought it might be nice to give Nate a shout out. Now Blambot are a font company so if you are a comic letter or you're looking to start comic lettering definitely check Blambot out purely because you know they've got free fonts on there they've got paid fonts and the wonderful thing about Nate what he does is if you buy or you know take one of the free fonts he will let you use them fonts on your small press independent comics free of charge so you don't have to worry about any licenses that kind of thing so definitely check out his website you know and his fonts are worth every penny i've got a bunch of them and i use them all the time there'll be a link to the website in the description but you know let's talk about you know crossbarring those eyes okay guys so on the screen at the moment you can see two identical sentences in two identical balloons yet one is correct and one is incorrect if you cannot spot the difference between the two balloons there is no shame in it i personally could not do this for the first time out as well but i'm going to go through it now so please don't worry now how i like to think about it is if an eye is on its own it has a crossbar like so then if an eye is either at the beginning middle or end of a word it doesn't have a crossbar like so that's why the balloon on the left is correct because if you look at the balloon on the right every single eye within that balloon has a crossbar to it like so. So as a rule, if the eye is on its own, give it a crossbar. If it's in a word, you know, beginning, middle, end, don't give it a crossbar. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, share, and a subscribe. I will see you in the next video. And remember, if I can make comics, anyone can. Thank uh you. -huh.